Hi, it's Sarah. This is Hardcover Hearts, and I'm here with an unboxing video. Actually, this is going to be a compilation of unboxing. I think I mentioned in my previous video that I had really failed in nonfiction November and threw myself into a reading slump and was really kind of upset at uh, all the books that I had that I that were featured in places I wanted to travel to. And so to, as any bibliophile does to make myself feel a little bit better, I went to Blackwell's and it was right around the time of Black Friday. So I figured I would see if they had any sales, see if they had anything that I wanted uh, that would kind of take me out of my slump. So I have a few packages that are arriving. So this will be a compilation because unfortunately Blackwell's doesn't send them as one order. Uh, it'll send them out as they arrive or as they're able to. So I'm going to get kind of random uh, shipments here and there. So this is the first of the Black Friday desperation <laughs> buys. Uh, and I do want to put a caveat. Uh, I saw something from Susan from Road Reads. And she said that she feels bad whenever she does these hauls because uh, people will go and buy a book based on a haul, but we haven't read them yet. So I don't know if this is a good book. Uh, so you are on your own and you are taking your chances if you decide to go and buy the book. You should watch my videos, uh, my week of reading videos to see what I actually thought of it at the end. So uh, caveat there and disclaimer already provided, right? Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first box, let me do the finishing opening okay it's just one okay good uh so this is a book from an author that i heard about from one of my favorite podcasts which is slightly foxed this is a favorite of the gods by sybil bedford i mean look at that cover i knew nothing about sybil bedford it says here, Sybil Bedford was born in 1911 in Charlottenburg, Germany, the daughter of a German father and an English mother. She grew up in Italy, France, and England. The account of her travels in Mexico, A Visit to Don Octavio, was her first published book in 1953, and she followed it with three novels, A Legacy, A Favorite of the Gods, this one, and A Compass Error. Her semi-autobiographical novel, Jigsaw, was shortlisted for the Booker Prize in 1989, and her memoir, Quicksands, was published in 2005. She died in 2006. Apparently, she was a very interesting woman, uh, a lesbian, uh, kind of bon vivant, uh, who uh, traveled around the world. I'll put a link to that uh, slightly foxed episode because it was fascinating, had a whole sorts of interesting stuff. And because of that, I was so interested and wanted to read her book. So this is uh, one that was recommended there. And this one specifically says, uh, one autumn in the late 1920s, for no particular reason at all, as it would seem, we began to live in France. That's the opening line. Constanza and her daughter step off the train in the French Riviera in the late 1920s without the slightest notion of where they are. But their story begins with Constanza's parents, a beautiful New England heiress, a Roman prince, and the confused catastrophe of their marriage. An idyllic childhood spent in crumbling Roman palaces, sun-baked olive groves, at sumptuous parties, and being taught by the most interesting men in Rome. It is changed forever by a fatal clash of culture and an impulsive decision. In this elegant novel, Sybil Bedford tells the story of three generations of women of Europe and America in the turbulence of the early 20th century. I mean, sounds right up my alley. Okay, the next one. Another singular book. Okay, this, good. Uh, a Bookshop in Algiers. And this is by Kether Adimi. And this just seemed like charming and quaint. And again, I needed some charming and quaint after uh, my, my s small slump. Uh, and it says, in 1936, a young dreamer named Edmund Charlot opened a modest bookshop in Algiers. 
wants the heart of Algerian cultural life where Camus launched his first book and the free French printed propaganda during the war. Charlot's beloved bookshop has been closed for decades, living on as a government lending library. Now it is to be shuttered forever. But as a young man named Riyadh empties it of its books, he begins to understand that a bookshop can be more than just a shop that sells books. A bookshop in Algiers charts the changing fortunes of Charlot's bookshop through the political drama of Algiers' turbulent 20th century of war, revolution, and independence. It's a moving celebration of books, bookshops, and those who dare to dream. So those are the first two of what will be more to come. I'm back. It's Saturday, and I've been enjoying a really nice morning of nice brunch and listening to an audiobook as I do some errands and, uh, and chores and all the like. The doorbell rang, and what has come but book mail. So I went ahead and opened it, but I thought I would share what, what arrived. Uh, this is part of the Blackwell's order that I talked about a, a little earlier, as well as I thought I would also show the latest of the Shakespeare and Company year of reading. And I also went last weekend to my local charity shop uh, and found a few really good, good additions to my collection. So I'll share it all with you. Let's get started, huh? Okay, so from Blackwell's, uh, it's, I'm sure you know, it's uh, Cloak and Dagger Christmas. So the first one is one that I mentioned I can't find in, in the United States, but sounded fantastic. And this is Eight Detectives by Alex Pavesi. Uh, and I just love that cover. I think it's so cool. Uh, it says on the back, all murder mysteries follow a simple set of rules. In the 1930s, Grant McAllister, a mathematics professor turned author, worked them out, hiding their secrets in a book of crime stories. And then Grant disappeared. But Julia Hart has finally tracked him down. She wants to know what happened to him. But she's about to discover that a good mystery can be murder to solve. It sounds so good. The next murder mystery that I really wanted to get was something that is not yet out in the United States. It's The Appeal by Janice Hallett. One murder, 15 suspects. Can you uncover the truth? And the back blurb says, there's a mystery to solve in the small town of Lockwood. It starts with the arrival of two secretive newcomers and ends with a tragic death. Roderick Tanner QC has assigned law students Charlotte and Femi to the case. Someone's already been sent to prison for murder, but he suspects that they are innocent and that far darker secrets have yet to be revealed. Sounds fantastic. And this is an amateur uh, sleuthy thing. So I think that fits one of the props. Uh, I think this one might get started today, this weekend, we'll see. Then uh, here are some other things that uh, are just kind of random, random things that uh, piqued my interest. Uh, this one, I can't remember where I saw this, uh, but this is A Sunday in Ville de Frey by Dominique Barbary. Gorgeous cover, right? And it tells the story of a woman of Parisian who goes home to see her sister and, uh, or at least see, goes to her sister's home in kind of the suburbs. And something comes up about, about her past. And uh, it's supposed to be wry, funny, but also a little haunting and poignant. It sounds sublime cover right that cover then this next one is kind of a noir from an author that i really liked i just read his book red lights uh earlier this year and really enjoyed it this is betty by george simonon i keep wanting to say paul simonon of the clash who's just like one of my dreams but no it's george um and this is about a woman who's in, in a decline. She's uh, lost everything and she's found by another woman in a Parisian restaurant, completely drunk. And the woman takes her to her house and is kind of taking care of her. And, uh, and some things start to come up. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. It sounds really dark and, and moody. So we'll see when I get to that. This is another one I won't be getting to soon because of what I had mentioned in my last week of reading, how I failed at nonfiction November and the sadness about 
about um, reading books about Paris and, and Rome and London and all that. <laughs> this is, I know, right? Uh, it could, couldn't be funnier. George Orwell's Down and Out in Paris and London. I want to read this. Uh, I've read some some Orwell, but I want to read this in advance of reading Rebecca Solnit's new book. I think it's called Roses for Orwell, uh, where she, or Orwell's Roses or something like that. Uh, so I will get to this in advance of reading that other one. I love a book that gives you homework, right? The next one, I don't know where I heard of this author. It could be from either Backlisted Podcast or Slightly Foxed, but look at these covers. Oh. This is Statues in a Garden by Isabel Colgate. Isn't that gorgeous? And it says, it's 1914, the old standards are gone. There is bitterness in politics, talk of civil war in Ireland. But all this means little to Cynthia Weston, attractive wife of cabinet member Almer Weston. Together with her nephew, Philip, she will commit a betrayal that will implode all that she holds most dear. So, ooh, sounds good, 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 good. Then the next two I got specifically because I wanted to read them, but also because they were signed editions. The first one, it, I will be surprised if this doesn't appear on some of my favorites of this year. I was, I was actually kind of stunned that this is a debut. It was so tightly constructed and made me feel so much. Uh, plus this cover's outstanding. This is Assembly by Natasha Brown. A very tiny, taut little book. Uh, it's the story of a, a black woman in London has achieved a level of success in her life. She is about to go uh, on holiday for the weekend with her very rich, wealthy uh, boyfriend, a white boyfriend who they're going home to their country estate. And it's going to be like a, uh, a big party at, at this estate. And she gets some news that really shakes her foundation and starts to disassemble her life uh, in very interesting ways. I thought this was powerful and fantastic, so I wanted a copy of my own. And um, not only is this a, a interesting copy, but it's also signed by the author. So happy to have gotten that. This is also signed by the author. This is Burnt Coat by Sarah Hall. And this cover is also outstanding. Love it. I'm gonna read a little bit of the blurb here. In the bedroom above her immense studio at Burncoat, the celebrated sculptor Edith Harkness is making her final preparations. Her life will draw to an end in the coming days. Downstairs, the studio is a crucible glowing with memories and desire. It was here when the first lockdown came that she brought Hallett. The lover she barely knew, a presence from another culture, a doorway into a new and feverish world. The story of two new lovers confined, Burnt Coat is a sublime and scorching experience, an elegy burning with resistance, which no reader will forget. I mean, it sounds so good. It sounds so good. Okay, so that's what I purchased and, just, and was just sent from Blackwell's. Let me also show you what came from my year of reading subscription from Shakespeare Company. First of all, uh, this gorgeous uh, print came in really nice uh, cardboard stock. And I just think it's so lovely. Oh, Shakespeare Company, I miss you. Uh, so really love that. Putting that in place water here. I need to frame some things up here, including I need to frame this that I received, uh, I think maybe last year, I didn't, haven't gotten it framed yet. This is Simone de Beauvoir doing the signings. Isn't it amazing? Voila. Okay, so the first one. This is A Thing of Beauty. I'm removing the, the little uh, wrappers that they put on, explaining why they sent it. And uh, this is A Thing of Beauty by Peter Fiennes, Travels in Mythical and Modern Greece. And the wrapper is from Glenn and it says, few of us have had the ability to travel abroad of late. No kidding. Perhaps that's why I found Peter Fiennes peripatetic meanderings through the Grecian landscape so alluring. What would it be like to breathe the same air as Pericles and Socrates? Or more specifically, more longingly to delve deep into nymph infested woodlands. Surely the gods are still there too, waiting to reassure us with a feast. 
Dinner is served in a spring room of Thera. Would you care for an ambrosial cocktail brimful with hope? I thought you might. Right this way, Dionysus is already pouring you a glass. So charming. Uh, not reading this yet because not trying to throw myself into another slump slash depression. <laughs> but that will keep. Then I literally saw this, have this on my list, and decided to hold off and not buy it. And I'm so glad. This was on my black list list, I should say. This is a gorgeous, I'll take those. So. This is a gorgeous cover. Looking for Trouble, the classic memoir of a trailblazing war correspondent by Virginia Cowles, forward by Christina Lamb. Look at that. And then when you look at the back, gorgeous, right? Gorgeous. And the end papers are fantastic. Really, really love this. Faber and Faber do a really great job. Let me read you the wrapper. It says, rarely has a book been so appropriately titled. Looking for trouble sees intrepid journalist Virginia Cowles recount her time chasing strife across Europe between 1935 to 1940. As soon as Cowles heard news of a bomb falling or fighting breaking out, she dropped everything to be there and report back. The result is a nail-biting memoir that takes in the Spanish Civil War, as well as the conflict in Russia, Germany, France, and even the Winter War in Finland. Cowles' somewhat blasé approach to her own safety, as well as the female gaze on war, just makes looking for trouble all the more compelling. And this is from Linda. Thank you, Linda. This is from Ushi Gatward, and it's called English Magic. This is published by Galley Beggar Press. Then the wrapper is from Abigail, and it says, On the face of it, these stories present a world that is not so different to our own, but the sense of something intangible, something just out of reach, lingering in the corners, pervades and steeps them in an inexplicable strangeness. The sense of dream forgotten, the meaning just at the tip of the tongue, Intriguing and haunting, Gatward com confidently leaves just enough of our the re intriguing and haunting. Gatward confidently leaves just enough of the reading to our imaginations that these stories stayed with me long after having put the book down. Sounds good, right? And then the last. Uh, so this is one's really funny because I have wanted this book, was going to buy it. Then my boss was in Paris in November. And she asked if I wanted anything. And I said, yes. Uh, she said she was going to go to Shakespeare and Company anyway. And I said, please get me the newest Simone de Beauvoir. Uh, so this just came out. Uh, this is The Inseparables. Look at that cover. Just, And I wanted this cover. I didn't want the American one. Uh, and she went, to, she went to a Shakespeare and company and there was a huge line outside. It was going to take them a long time. And she was with her husband, who is, I don't think is a reader. So I said, you know, it's fine. Uh, don't worry about it. I can always order it myself from Shakespeare and company. And ultimately I was hoping it was going to be in the Shakespeare and company year of reading. And I'm so glad I decided not to have her wait. Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, this says, this book is a thrilling surprise from Simone de Beauvoir to all of her readers. Considered by the author to be too intimate when she wrote it, it remained unpublished until this year. This semi-autobiographical novella in a masterful translation by Lauren Alkin, and with a wonderful introduction of Deborah Levy, oh, Deborah Levy, uh, is an account of a wholehearted friendship between two girls experiencing passion for the first time in their young lives. The relationship is ultimately marked by an experience of a great love and loss, but the depth of its tenderness will leave no reader unmoved. It is exquisite. So, yay. Can't wait. I'm happy to have that for my collection. Okay, so those were the Blackwells, as well as the Year of Reading from Shakespeare, from Shakespeare and Company. Now let me show you something else that I got in the mail. Uh, this is the, the newest edition of the Paris Review. So they changed uh, editors. And when it came out, uh, they skipped an edition. So they skipped the fall. Uh, this is the winter edition for 2021. I love the cover, uh, but I was like, wait a minute, this looks really tiny. And sure enough, I held it against the last cover and look at it, it's so small. Uh, and at first I was like, oh, what a rip, but it does look like there's more, yeah, there's more pages. It's a thicker, it's a thicker volume than than this one. So that's good, at least. 
So excited to read that. And then last weekend, I went to my very favorite charity shop, uh, which is the Friends of the Library store in Berkeley. And the, the deals that you can get there are insane, insane, like $1, uh, like uh, hardcovers under $5, usually three, two, one. And then a hard, and then uh, paperbacks are usually a dollar or fifty cents. They have a huge fifty cent wall of just like all the stuff that they're trying to kind of move through, and all of the proceeds go to supporting the types of programs that they do at the Berkeley Public Library. So it's you know I get something out of it. I always love seeing and trying to find you know interesting books there, and the Berkeley Public is just like it's one of the most literate publics I've ever. I've, in any community I've ever lived in. So there's always interesting things. And to prove that, let me show you what I found. More than a couple of these are gonna be for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. Oh, I was really happy to find these. These are from Soho Press, and this is from Kyu Shelong, uh, who writes the Inspector Chan series. The first is Death of a Red Heroine. Really gorgeous cover. Then the second is A Loyal Character Dancer. Both these look great. They're set in Shanghai uh, and have a lot to do with uh, politics. Um, so the Communist Party, politics, all of that. So very excited to read those. Then I've never owned any of these or read any of these. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, well, I'll take a chance on that. This is the British Library Crime Classics. I do really love those covers. Uh, this is the Cornish Coast Murder by John Bood or Bud. Uh, the back says, the Reverend Dodd, vicar of the quiet Cornish village of Boscawen, spends his evenings reading detective stories by the fireside. But heaven forbid that the shadow of any real crime should ever fall across his seaside parish. But the vicar's peace is shattered one stormy night when Julius Tregarthen, a secretive and ill-tempered magistrate, is found at his home in Boscawen with a bullet through the head. So... Good, 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 good. Sounds juicy and, and fantastic. The next one I remember seeing because it was part of the Jollop Prize. I think it was part of the long list and I wanted to get it, but it was so outrageously expensive to, to get it shipped. So I said, well, I'll just wait. Um, and it ended up just sitting right there on the shelf. I thought I've got to, I've got to get it. Uh, this is What's Left of Me is Yours by Stephanie Scott. This is set in modern day Tokyo and it is based on a true crime that actually happened. Uh, and I love the cover. I think it's really beautiful. And so I think I might try to read this for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. We'll see. Just happy that I found it. And I think it was a dollar. Ridiculous. Then the last of the cloak and dagger mystery type of books that I found, uh, this one really, really had me in turmoil. I wasn't, I wasn't sure I was going to venture here. I love Dorothy L. Sayer and I absolutely love the Peter, Lord Peter Whimsey series, but the, the kind of subset where Harriet, he meets Harriet Bain and they solve those, those crimes. That is, I think, part of the best of, of, of mystery series. And Harry Vane may be one of my most favorite characters ever. So when I heard that there was a woman who was asked by Dorothy L. Sayers' estate to spruce up some of the manuscripts that they found that she just didn't get a chance to finish, I, I was a little apprehensive because I did not want to see Harriet Vane diminished in any way, shape or form. She's too strong and, and phenomenal a character. So when I saw this, I was a little, a little worried, but when it was $1, I was like, I'll take it. Uh, this is the first of kind of a reprise. The title strange is Thrones Dominations. And what I like about it is it actually has Harriet Vane uh, listed there, not just uh, Lord Peter Whimsey. And I started this already and it is delightful and she is just wonderful. And so far I'm, so far I'm approving. So we'll see where this goes. And then lastly, I found a book that is not a cloak and dagger Christmas type of book, but it is something from an author that just won the Booker Prize. This is Damon Galgut's The Good Doctor. 
Said in South Africa, it says, the good doctor is a taut, intense tale of dashed hopes of the post-apartheid era and the small betrayals that doom a friendship. Sounds fantastic. And having been raised in Mozambique, uh, always interested in post-apartheid, um, post-apartheid South Africa, of course, I unfortunately left before, before that happened. So uh, it makes me even more curious of what was life like as they kind of moved from apartheid into, um, into independence. So that is my bevy of books. I'm quite pleased because I have time in December, this wonderful chunk of time where I'll just be able to do nothing but read because we're not traveling. Our family is not able to come. So we're just going to be here. And so I'll just be able to read a ton and enjoy uh, a nice leisurely exit out of this year into the new one. So that's it for me for now. I would love to know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were. Thanks for for watching and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.